One is hip size. If you have very narrow hips, your waist is going to be smaller usually. If you have very wide hips, your waist is going to be bigger. And that establishes kind of how wide your gut is. If your gut is very wide and very far out, it's going to be way bigger than if it's just very narrow and far out. So that's definitely a thing. And you can't really change that with current technology. Scott, would you get a surgery that breaks your hip bones and reconstructs them into smaller ones? Oh, no. That's tough. Another factor is how tight your ab muscles are when you're not contracting them, ab muscle laxity. Not just the muscles, but the fascial sheath that covers that whole region. And that's just genetic for the most part. It can be fixed with advanced surgery, which I'm probably going to get sooner or later because if you've ever seen any pictures of me, folks, uh, uh, Scott, who's editing this? Alex. Alex, throw a nice fun picture of me doing a vacuum and of me having my whole like waist out situation that, you know, like I don't uh, actually have a very high body fat in many uh, times in my life. And I still have an enormous gut simply because I have just very high genetic laxity. My parents look like that. Everyone in my family looks like they just have little pot bellies. And that's just a thing. So remember, that is a potential way in which, like, here's actually a really easy test. If you can suck in, do a vacuum, and get your waist to come down really small, and then when you just relax, it blows out really big, it's just the abdominal wall laxity. If you have a big gut and you try to suck in and nothing really happens or goes in by an inch and nothing happens, like, eh, it's not abdominal wall laxity. It could also be that, but really you just have a lot of stuff in there. Let's talk about the stuff in there. 